We're just about halfway through the year, and there's been a whole lot of music that's dropped. With such an abundance of music, it's pretty easy to get overwhelmed and not know what you should listen to or what's even worth listening to. So here are some of my favorite albums of 2024 in chronological order. We'll talk about the list real quick, and then we'll get into the individual albums. First off, we have Boldy James and Nicholas Craven, Penalty of Leadership. Angry Blackman with The Legend of ABM. Eloise Gino with Everything Gonna Be Alright. Schoolboy Q with Blue Lips. Brother Ali and Unjust with Love and Service. Rhapsody with Please Don't Cry. Makami with Rich Ass Haitian. Vince Staples with Dark Times. Ian Kelly and Overcast with Art. No Worries with Why Lord. And Lupe Fiasco with Samurai. So, now that we've gotten that whole list out of the way, let's talk about each album. This album has been so good. <laughs> it's, this was an album that I was really looking forward to, obviously because it's Boldy and Nicholas Craven, and I really enjoyed their last album. But also, this was the first project that Boldy worked on after his car accident. So I was curious to see what sort of mindset he was in after that and how it may have affected his content and delivery. Thankfully, not too much has changed, and it actually felt like he was experimenting a little bit more than he had in the past, while also rapping over production that at sometimes felt a little ominous, which again ties back into where his head may have been during this time. Especially when you compare it to some of the other projects that he's put out this year that are a little bit more in the expected lane for Boldy. Killing the shit. I know you niggas is feeling the shit. Spider Man spitting that venomous shit. Stanley Kubrick with the cinema shit. I'm ignorant, bitch. The music of my niche. I will preface this by saying The Legend of ABM is not an album for everyone. I just straight up. But I will say it was a nice change of pace from what I've been listening to over the past few years. Angry Black Men definitely lean more into the industrial sound. But with that said, I do feel that this project is a bit more accessible than some other projects in, within that genre. And its runtime of just under 30 minutes definitely does well to aid this. And you know, for those of you who are fans of Death Grips or even Clipping, this is definitely worth a listen. It's, it's a lot easier to listen to, in my opinion, and I feel like they bring something different. You get a little bit more introspection than you may on some other projects. I'm tired of being numb, I'm out of here, but I always need escape. Feel like I'm swaying on a cliff every day. Can't imagine how I feel. I let a state when nothing feels real. When I was a kid, they prescribed me all these pills because they said I lack focus. How can someone doctor be in hope? Eloy Gino's music has always been an enjoyable listen to me, and this project is no different. I really do appreciate it for being short and sweet, which makes it super easy to throw on and listen to. But with that said, it also touches on a variety of topics that can, you know, get a little heavy. But, you know, still, for a six-track EP, it does accomplish a lot over its 15-minute runtime for sure. And I think most people will get something out of it, at least. I'm a guy to the bitch, little kid. I'm a guy to the bitch, little bitch. Yeah, rich. Out of every album that's dropped so far this year, this has been one of the few albums that I've just returned to all the time. And I want, and not even just in an individual song, I listen to the entire project all the way through. I really enjoy it. And honestly, I feel like this is exactly what I wanted from Schoolboy Q at this point in time. He was able to convey a lot of different ideas and thoughts and topics without having to get super conceptual. Like this wasn't a proper concept album. There was not like a full runtime or a list of things that he wanted to get accomplished in any particular order. Like he was able to just say everything that he, he was going through, everything that he's done in the, this time that he's been away and make it sound good, which I feel is even more impressive than making a concept album or telling your entire story. Um, now, while we might not get some of the higher energy drug fueled songs that a lot of people love from him, we're still getting a lot of bangers and a decent amount of introspection. From the bottom of the metropolitan to the home of the Ottomans, the globe is my Ottomans. Toes up on every part of it. I ain't drop a dollar on my doctorate. I probably got a scholarship. I always appreciate a Brother Ali album. He generally does well to convey everything that's going on in his head, and it's done so in a manner that makes you want to listen almost. Like everyone kind of jokes that, oh, he's kind of got this pastor voice and presence, but. I mean, he, he kind of does. 
Um, this project also just sounds really good from a production standpoint. Unjust was sampling a bunch of children's cartoons from the seventies, I believe, and it just made it work. <laughs> like it didn't sound weird at all. Um, it was just overall a really enjoyable listen and a breath of fresh air, given all the rap beef that was happening around its release. One for the money and one for the homies. I move with respect. I don't need nothing on me. The father may wait for me. Fitches like Bronny. I got my little belly, my blessings. They on me. It had been five years since Rhapsody's last album. And in that time, I was frequently asking myself, yo, when are we going to get a new project? Thankfully, it's finally here. And throughout the album, we are given a good list of reasons and answers to that question. Like, yo, where's Rhapsody been? What's she doing? Where's the album? Like Rhapsody has clearly been going through a lot of stuff in the past five years and has processed a lot, but it's still going through the process of, you know, understanding it. And this album does well to explain that. It doesn't necessarily go super in depth into anything, but it, it, it explains where she's at and still gives us some really good music while doing so. And I just feel like it's, it's admirable to hear her willingness to share that what was going on over the course of this project through like in her life at that time. I tend to look forward to listening to a Makami album because I never know what I'm going to get. I never know what he's going to try to say and what sort of message he's getting across. Trying to break down and interpret his lyrics has always been an enjoyable process for me, and it's no different here. He does make it incredibly hard by not having any lyrics really posted out there, but that's part of the fun, I guess, <laughs> as weird as that sound. Uh, but with that said, I do understand that he is not for everybody, and that sometimes it could just be off-putting to listen to him, let alone trying to understand what he says. Like, you know, his his, vo his voice on this project and many others has been a little grating <laughs> almost. So it's like, okay, once you get past that, you, you're in. Like I I listened to it a couple of times, start getting into it, and then I'm like, all right, this is all I want to listen to now. Long for loving and affection. These hoes ain't what I need. I need direction. This is Vince Staples' last Def Jam album, and he left on a pretty high note. This project, as well as his past few have been very consistent and as expected he's been giving us really just a pretty mature outlook uh, to on the things that he has seen and gone through over his life just the years in general while this album was really enjoyable and i do like to throw it on every so often i am actually more curious to see where he's going to go next now that he has no label obligations anymore like He's a free person. He can do whatever he wants. He can put out something entirely different or, you know, not even put out music that whatever he wants to do. I'm, I'm here for it. A stand for all on me. Absolutely. I'm active. Breaking brackets, closing caskets, deliver a message right now to the masses. Divine divinity declining from daily doses. Everything, everything ever vested the youth. These are two Oakland natives and they've come together to give us a quick about 10 minute EP. And it has been great. It has been an enjoyable listen every time. This project did have Kells kind of step a little bit out of his comfort zone sonically, but he still brings in a lot of what we love and appreciate him for. While this project may feel a bit more disjointed in comparison to some of the other projects that I've mentioned on this list and just enjoy throughout the year, I think it does really well to almost serve as an appetizer for what we could expect to hear on a full album from me and Kelly which I sure hope is coming soon. It has been a long time since I have really heard Anderson Pack outside of Silk Sonic, and even longer since we've heard him with Knowledge. This album does a good job of telling us what he's been doing during that time without really being super upfront about it. Like, he... he he mentions everything briefly. He kind of takes us through the emotions, everything that he's been experiencing. Anderson Pack does a really good job of making Anderson Pack albums about Anderson Pack. Like they're very personal and specific to him. But this one, it's, you know, a bit more serious and somber at times. 
there are still some upbeat tracks, but overall it's, you know, a little more personal. And, you know, compared to his previous works, it's definitely a change, but I think it's a welcome one. As much as I tried not to, I, I honestly have to really put this album on here. I have not stopped listening to it. Part of me was like, oh no, it just came out. You can't include it. You haven't listened to it enough. But man, I, I can't stop thinking about it. It is a really good album. This project is 30 minutes long. You can run it back to back to back and it's, it's like nothing. Like so, going into it, it's like since I first heard of its concept of being around Amy Winehouse as a battle rapper, I was intrigued. Then, once the title track came out, I was all in. Lupe excels when it comes to concept albums, but this is different in the sense that he put the concept out there for people to easily find and go into the album knowing. Like that's not a normal thing for him. I feel you can go even further into this album by finding connections between Lupe's career thus far and the career that he's being imagining for Amy Winehouse. There's really so much to get into with this project, then, but that's, that's beyond the scope of this video. Th this is a really good album, though, and definitely check it out if you haven't already. Now, with all of that said, this is just a list of the albums that I really liked. I didn't want to include everything because originally my list had more than double these albums. And I had something written for each one of them. I might do an honorable mentions list. I might do a follow-up. Who knows? But if your favorite album isn't here, that's okay. It's probably still good. But, you know, why don't you just let me know in the comments below what you thought should be included on this list, what you've been listening to this year. Because obviously, as much as I try to listen to everything, I can't listen to everything. I try to give like most everything that comes out at least one listen, like at least anything that comes up on my radar. But again, like, I'm just one person. I can't listen to everything. I got other things to do. I have, I have work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there are other things that come up and that's totally fine. But that's what this is about. Let's talk about it in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I missed and what else I should check out before the, the year is up. And also what you guys are looking forward to. Like what other albums are coming out that you're like, oh yeah, this one's going to be really good. It's going to kick out any one of these albums. But anyways, that's all I got. Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe to see more rambling and content like this. Thank you for watching and please stay safe out there.